Hi everybody, it's me, Teresa Perrin. I do want to discuss a few things with AVCT with you today and do some more technical analysis to see where this is headed. Guys, um, not much has changed on Fintel. I will show it to you briefly, but the biggest thing that is really peeving me right now is what's going on with the amount of dark pool trades. Um, they have gone through the roof and this is absolutely unacceptable. And unfortunately with Susquehanna being our market maker, I am not surprised. This is um, really pretty disgusting. And I think you're gonna be surprised when you see the numbers. Anyways, let's get started. Please remember nothing I say is financial advice and always do your own DD. All right, guys, so the short interest has not been updated any time recently on Fintel. It's still showing at 52.74%, and I highly doubt that there has been no change. Um, so it is what it is, but it's still showing to that, well, this is probably new information, but there's 90,000 shares available um, for shorts to borrow. This is actually less than what we've been seeing as of late. It's been between usually around 150,000 to 300,000. So it looks like shorts are starting to run out of steam. The cost to borrow is between 22.68 and 23.9%. And guys, um, you know, really take it with a grain of salt for what you see on the failure to delivers, because as you can see, even though we have this big 2,759,000, um, they got substantially less in the following days. So I doubt that they are still available. And given the fact, um, I mean, that they haven't been closed out yet, I believe that they probably have at this point. And given the fact that there is 90 million as of the last date, we had information on 929, excuse me, 90,000 guys, oh my God, I need help. Um, But 90,000, there looks like it's been covered, okay? So based on this information, I wouldn't even consider FTDs um, as something that's gonna make this go flying right now. However, I am very curious to see what's happened since 9.30 and specifically after that reverse split because I do believe, guys, based on the price action, that these have gone substantially higher. And I think th that given when we get the next set, um, we are going to see a big spike in FTDs. At that point, they may become relevant and help us to move the stock going up. All right, guys, the dark pool trades on AVCT today accounted for 73% of the total volume. Yes, 73%. Guys, that literally makes me sick to my stomach and completely repulsed because how can you expect any kind of a free and fair market where there is price competition when they're rerouting 73% of all trades to the dark pool. It's just so messed up. I don't have any other words to describe it, but unfortunately this is nothing new. And I hate to say it, but this is the same thing that Susquehanna did with BBIG. And, um, I'm not surprised by it at all. They are two totally different plays. So please don't think I'm comparing them in that way because I am not. Um, AVCT, I believe, um, has the opportunity to make big moves to the upside um, where BBIG, until there's some major changes, I don't see that happening. I mean, it may get runs, but I don't see anything substantial holding it until there are a lot of changes made. Um, but on AVCT, I don't believe that's the case. I believe that AVCT has an amazing product with candy and whether or not a buyout happens that this stock will um, make moves to the upside. I believe that it's severely undervalued at this price. And I don't think that um, you know, they're allowing this to trade freely. And if they were, I think the price would be a lot different. Now, I also believe that with BBIG, that if they allowed that to trade freely, the price would be a lot different too, because there's a lot of retail in both of these trades. And unfortunately, where retail traders come in, comes a lot of manipulation when they're not prepared for this and they're not trying to run the stock. So right now I believe what's happening 
is that they're in the accumulation phase. I believe they're trying to hold this stock down while they accumulate larger positions. And we'll see if we see any filings, um, you know, within the next 30 to 60 days showing us that institutions are buying. In which case, um, once they've loaded their positions, guys, I believe that we see this run. And now I've gone over in other videos, so I'm not gonna go over it again, but there is, you know, institutional ownership in this stock. And they did buy in at a much higher price than what the stock currently trades at, guys. So there's no doubt in my mind that the stock will move higher. It's just a matter of how long they want to play this game. But I do think that we are going to start seeing movement to the upside. I think that a catalyst would really help with that. Um, but I'm going to show you the technical analysis to why I believe that things are starting to turn to the upside um, in the shorter time frames. Now we need that to start conveying to larger time frames in order to see bigger moves. But, you know, it has to start somewhere and, you know, it has to initially begin in those smaller time frames. So that being said, let's take a look at what's going on there. All right, guys, for the technical analysis, I'm going to start with some of the smaller time frames, beginning with the 60 minute chart, because as you can see, AVCT did come back down today like I expected. However, I will be honest, it held above that double bottom at 120, um, one that I expected it to potentially hit today. Um, and then bounce from there. It actually stayed, I believe it hit 125 or 126 as the low a day, and then began to start to move upwards. Now, looking at the 60 minute time frame, you can see the MACD, this red line here, has crossed above the green line, which is a bullish indicator of a move upward. And also, guys, that our MACD on the 60 minute time frame is moving to the upside as well. From that 30 um, percentage level, it's gone up to 46% um, or 46.81. I'm not sure if you'd call it a percent or not, but um, at any rate, it is moving upwards, guys, as well as volume was very low um, considerably today compared to other days, right? So we are starting to make a move to the upside. I want to look at potentially a smaller time frame to see if we get that as well, if we get bullish sentiment. All right, so if we move to the 30 minute time frame, we're also seeing that MACD crossover and we're actually above 50%, which is where I want us to be on the RSI. We're at 54. Um, bullish sign there for the 30 minute. So I believe that the 60 minute will follow. Let's take a look at the 15. On the 15 minute guys, we actually hit into that oversold on the RSI category today up at 70, which is where you see uh, that little pullback, right? But this is good. This is where we wanna be. We're at 69, which is great. And again, we have that MACD crossover. Now guys, ultimately what we need to see is if you're looking at all the blue lines here, we want this MACD to move above and start trading upwards of the um, blue indicators here, okay? That's our goal, and guess what? On that 15 minute time frame, we are very close to getting there, so that's good. Let's see if it changes in the five minute time frame. Yes, perfect. See this on the MACD, which is, guys, look in the bottom of your screen on the right side. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, my pointer does not work. Um, I don't know how to change that because like I said, I am not computer literate. Um, but guys, what I'm trying to show you is look at these um, blue waves. We are now trading with the MACD above that. And as you can see, the red line crossed above our green line, which is bullish on the MACD in that five minute time frame. And again, we're holding up at 65.3 on the RSI. So that's great as well, guys, because we want to stay above 50, right? And I expect on the smaller time frames it to go, you know, oversold, come back down, oversold, come back down. But our main goal is to stay above that 50 on the RSI. So guys, that's very, very bullish. And on the five minute time frame, you can see these candles. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I called it out um, that we made that 
1348 crossover, which you can see earlier, but it didn't really do anything. It just consolidated. And guys, I do believe that the reason for that, um, I, until it did, and then at the end of the day, it popped, right? I believe that the reason for that is because of the insane amount of volume that was sent to the dark pool today. It's absolutely unacceptable. 70% of all trades being sent to the dark pool that is not natural by any means and i hate to say this but this is just giving me that bbig vibes and susquehanna being the market maker guys they are horrible um in my opinion there's a lot of um crap that goes on with them that shouldn't and um i'm seeing similar games being played with that um dark pool you know 70 percent is huge it's just Guys, it's not a free and fair market when you're sending 70% of trades to the unlit exchange. I mean, it's just not, bottom line. So, again, um, we're looking at a lot of manipulation going on with ABCT. That being said, guys, I do think that we can um, still overcome it and hopefully move to the upside. If you see, we are getting close to crossing above that 200 SMA on the five-minute chart. Um, the 13 and 20 and 48 are all starting to curl upwards and the 13 and 20 have crossed above. Now I wanna see us get everything above that 200 SMA line. That would be the first sign of bullishness um, for this stock that we've had in a while. But going back to the daily chart, guys, it's still looking rough, I have to be honest with you. If you look at the daily one year chart, our MACD has not curved up yet. Um, hopefully, with the smaller time frame starting to, we will start to see that red line curl and cross above, you know, the green. And that's going to be the start of our trend up. And then ultimately, we want to see it get above these blue waves here. And again, um, our RSI is only at 39. We need that to move up above 50 um, for bullish sentiment, guys. And... We want to see eventually these 13, these smaller moving averages, the 13, 20, and 48, curl to the upside and try to get above this 200 SMA. Guys, um, you know, the daily chart is still ugly, but on a positive note, the smaller time frames are getting good and those have to get better before the daily can make moves, right? So do I see a big move coming? not on the larger time frame potentially on the smaller time frames if something happens something bullish sentiment comes in guys then we can get a push to the upside but right now it's kind of like we're just stuck in limbo waiting for that to happen now there is one thing that i'm thinking could be a bullish um, indicator or sentiment that brings something to this stock and that would be us regaining NASDAQ compliance. I did look today um, and see that for whatever reason they are still listing the market cap as um, not in compliance, which clearly it is at this point. So I'm a bit confused with why that hasn't changed yet. Again, I think it has something to do with the dates um, for whenever those shares closed um, from that offering. I'm not quite sure, um, or going back even for, um, you know, when they did the stock split and the Hudson Bay warrants and all that stuff went into effect. You know, the dates are not clear in the filings, so it's very hard to tell. And the company, unfortunately, guys, they're not good with PR. They haven't even announced publicly other than deep in the last filing that they regained the $1 minimum bid compliance. So, you know, things like that are not helping our situation. But again, this leads me to believe and have to ask myself, why is it that they don't care? And the only thing that comes to mind, guys, is because they already know the price. There's a buyout in the works. They know the price. They know what it's going to be valued at. And they really don't care what the interim price is because it makes no difference to them. Um... You know, again, that's that's where my thought process is. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't really know. But all I can think of is if I were the CEO of this company and my, you know, share price was doing this, wouldn't I be trying to put out as much good PR as possible? And my answer is absolutely. I think most people that had a corporation would feel that same way. Um, but this company doesn't seem to care. So there has to be a reason for that, guys. And you would think today, too, with everything going on with tech in China, that that would have been an opportunity for them to, 
you know, cause positive attention for AVCT because, you know, hello, American-based cloud technology company. Um, throw that out there somewhere, some kind of PR, put something good so that while all those companies in China are, are you know, being destroyed right now, um, they could jump in and try to take some of that market cap. But psh, did they do anything? No, guys. So again, why is that? And you guys have to conclude for yourself what you feel. Um, all I can say is right now it's kind of an opportunity to accumulate shares. Um, if that's something you're comfortable with, if you think that ABCT is getting bought out, then, you know, you have to look at this as an opportunity. And, you know, when there's negative in in a stock, there's also positive. You know, think about Mullen when it was down at 20, 30 cents. And those people that accumulated have done very, very well right now, right? Um, you know, obviously it depends on when they bought in. If they bought in at higher prices at three or four dollars and they didn't sell off when it was selling off, then yeah, they're probably not in great shoes. But again, you have to also ask, what are people's long-term investment strategies? Is this something that they're planning to hold for five or 10 years where they don't care about, you know, the waves that come with it? Because guys, every stock has its ups and downs. It's just a fact of life. Um, and you know, if you're in it for a long-term hold, that's a different story than if you're playing this for a potential run, right? So um, again, that being said, I got a lot of people asking me about when this buyout is gonna happen. Guys, we have no clue. Anyone that tells you they have an answer to that is, um, you know, either they're getting inside information or they're making stuff up. And I don't believe they're getting inside information. So I'd have to say they're making things up or making assumptions, whether they be fact-based or not. Um, you know, that's up for you to decide. But guys, a buyout can take several months. And that's something that you should be aware of. Um, and in the meantime, you know, trade something else with whatever funds you have available. And, you know, the, the thing is with this is you could wake up tomorrow and they announce and halt the stock and say a buyout, you know, news pending and a buyout's coming for X amount of dollars per share. Well, guess what? If we sold our stock, then it's going to open back up and be pretty darn close to that buyout price. That's generally what happens. Um, so do we want to do that? You know, again, that's a risk that you take and that's how everybody has to make their own decision. I personally am just continuing to accumulate at these low prices. Um, and knowing that, psh, God, this market's kind of wild lately, guys. You can't predict what one thing's going to do from one day or another. Look at what happened to Chinese stocks today. I don't think anyone, you know, anticipated that. And um, unfortunately, it's affecting a lot of foreign stocks because now people are just getting ideas in their head, which come with these things. But again, where others see fear, where there's a lot of fear in the market, it creates opportunity. So you have to look at it from both sides of things, guys. Anyways, I hope that this DD helped you, um, or should I say technical analysis helped you and, um, you know, the information about the dark pool trading. So um, please let me know in the comments below if you like this type of video or not, because I'm trying to figure out what to do with ABCT, because I know you guys look forward to hearing things, but I don't want to repeat myself day after day. Um, with the same stuff, guys, because unfortunately, Fintel's not really updating their information very accurately because it's still showing at that 52% short interest. So it's not very helpful. Um, and I want to add something more to it. And, you know, I do have some skills with chart reading, so I guess I should be 